welcome back to my channel. So this video is um, a lot different to the videos I usually film on here because it's beauty and lifestyle. This one um, came up due to some requests to do this, requests I had and a lot of questions I had on my Tom Select Me. So a lot of a few questions asking how it was and how it went and a load of different questions and someone asked if I could do a follow-up and I thought it would be a lot easier to explain it all in a video and oh my god look at that now um, I thought it would be a lot easier to explain it in a video format and to talk through the whole journey of my experience through the whole process and what it was like at different stages and this that and the other so that is why uh, there's this video basically I will try not to repeat because I basically spoke about the tonsillectomy I had um, in my February favourites. I briefly covered it and explained a few things, but obviously this video is going to be more in depth. Um, well, more in depth than the other one was. It, it will. I will take you through each stage: the before, the during, and each week after. Um, the surgery and what it was like this that and the other so uh, the reason I had a tonsillectomy um, my tonsils out basically um, was because I kept getting tonsillitis kind of rings a bell doesn't it why do you have your tonsils out because you get tonsillitis um, so basically I had um, I keep feeling like I'm gonna say basically a lot so I kept getting tonsillitis and I kept going to the doctors and they kept giving me antibiotics it wasn't clearing it in the end because I'd obviously had it too many times the antibiotics weren't doing anything they just were becoming immune basically um, and you don't necessarily need antibiotics to clear tonsillitis your body can naturally do it but my body just wasn't doing it and the antibiotics weren't even doing it so they put you for they put me forward for the surgery so I went in the hospital to speak to them about it because you don't have to have it, it's completely optional, it's up to you if you want to go through with it, because it's obviously a procedure you don't have to have done at this point, um, so it's basically up to you how you want to handle that. As I was feeling um, at that point, I had tonsillitis at that point I went in there, so I was like, yeah, I've had enough now, this is basically every month I was tonsil problems, it was just horrendous. Um, and because it wasn't clearing, I just felt like they had to come out, in my opinion, they had to come out. They were totally, yep, that is fine, that's, you know, you've obviously been referred, yep, okay. So they spoke to me about the surgery at that point, but obviously this was months before I was even going to have the operation, so you kind of forget a little bit what they say, they don't really go into too much depth. They sort of say, you're not going to be well for a few weeks, and I was a bit like okay I get that any surgery you're gonna not feel so great afterwards but I was not prepared for the pain and how bad I felt from what the doctor was saying at that point I was definitely not prepared for that so when I went into the day on my surgery it is day surgery by the way uh, having your tonsils out generally day surgery so you go into the day surgery unit um, this is what happened for me in my hospital anyway might be different for different people you might have to go in different parts but in my hospital you go in the outpatients bit um, and you basically you're in I was in a um, ward with a few different people um, mostly they were having their teeth something to do with their teeth um, and also there were a lot of kids in there having their tonsils out and I was like I'm the only adult in here having their tonsils out yay um, so basically what happens is when it's your time, when it's your slot, you don't really go in for a time, you're in there, I was in for morning surgery, so that was basically whenever they were ready for me, all the children went first, and then it was me. Um, I went in about 12 o'clock, um, so midday, lunchtime-ish, of course you can't eat before you have your surgery, which was fine for me, I don't usually eat breakfast, so that was okay, I'm used to that. Um, but if I knew I couldn't eat afterwards, I wish I'd eaten something. You shouldn't, but you know what I mean. That's how you feel. Um, 
so you put your hospital gown on and I was so so nervous at this point because going under general anaesthetic I was so scared thinking oh my god what does it feel like I don't want to sit there fighting you know going to sleep so you go down to the, sur the surgery you go down to the theatre and in your lovely hospital gown and you go on in and obviously you have the cannula or whatever it's called that thing in your arm so they can put the anaesthetic in or anything they need to put in there um, basically I led on that trolley bed thing and he didn't tell me the doctor didn't tell me he was putting the anaesthetic in my arm he just had something a syringe full of something and he was putting it connecting it to my arm so I was looking at him because he was to my left and as he was putting it in the next thing I knew I was waking up in a different room that's how fast it was for me there was no countdown you know how sometimes in films they say 10 you know count to 10 or count from 10 and usually they're fall asleep at about 3 or something um, there, there was none of that for me they didn't I didn't know what was going on um, it didn't hurt I didn't notice I didn't feel like I was fighting to go to sleep I literally was looking at this bloke well, the doctor at one minute and then the next minute I'm waking up somewhere else so I was like oh and when you're waking up you're very dozy I didn't remember really much of that part I just remember seeing a nurse to my side and nurses sort of around taking my blood pressure and that and then the next thing I knew I wake up back on the day the outpatients ward the day ward and I was in there again um, in a little room by the nurses station and I was just chilling in there um, and I was so so dozy I can't remember much of that bit because I was in and out of sleep a lot but the consultant came round and told me um, that the surgery went well it went as it should have but there were there weren't complications but there was a couple of little things that weren't quite right um, basically when they took my tonsils out I bled quite a lot not enough for a transfusion so don't worry but I lost blood that I shouldn't have lost because that you know it's obviously gonna be a little bit of bleeding but there was more than there should have been um, and also he told me my tonsils were chronically infected so basically that's why I had problems and the antibiotics weren't working because they were just chronically past it they weren't they weren't going to be fixed anymore so really they had to come out and it was a good job they come out um, there was a lot they were also not in the best looking condition they weren't looking very good they had a lot of I've forgotten the name that he used but basically little craters, little holes in them. So they, they just were past it, to be honest. So thank God they're not in there anymore. But um, obviously, you know, that's that was that. Um, obviously the surgery went well. It didn't go wrong or nothing. But there was a few things that just weren't quite right. Um, so, yeah, that's that part. Um, then I got told, because I live out of a radius that they like uh, to keep basically you can go home after a tonsillectomy but I got told I had to stay in because I live outside a radius of their liking so if there went something wrong when I went home I wasn't going to get there quick enough so they kept me in overnight um, so that was an exciting experience um, so I got transferred back on, onto a main ward I was out of the outpatient I was in the main hospital now um, and basically after that I was taking paracetamol, ibuprofen and another drug, I, I can't remember what it was, like an antibiotic or something, um, and another pain relief. At that point, um, the next day, it wasn't overly painful, it was painful obviously, but I wasn't, I could still drink quite happily, I could have a coffee quite happily, um, as long as it wasn't hot, <laughs> burn your throat off. Um, that's how I like my coffee, I like it to burn my throat, so I had to have it warm, which wasn't a big fan of, but hey, you deal with it to have your coffee. Um, and they came around with food, and I had a bowl of mashed potato, that went down quite okay, it hurt, but it was fine, I was managing. Um, then when I went home, uh, you know, it was fine, I, w I didn't feel too great in myself, um, but the pain was manageable. I could swallow quite happily. Well, not happily, but you know, it went down okay. It didn't cause me any problems. Um, 
And then it come to about day five, day six, of a week later, um, and it was starting to hurt more, and it really was painful. I found that I started to not be able to drink very well. I couldn't have coffee anymore. I couldn't drink without it really hurting, and it was very painful. I started to not be able to eat. Even soft things were really, really painful. Jelly, um, anything like that. It was horrendous. I was in so much pain. Honestly, it was horrible, horrible. Um, and basically that week, so on the first day of your, uh, the after the day of surgery, I did look in my mouth and there was this white, all this white at the back. You can't open it too much because obviously it hurts, but there's the, all this white was at the back, all this stuff, it was disgusting. But basically you, it's to obviously help heal the wounds. So don't worry, that's completely normal. Seeing white at the back is great. Um, but you basically have that for about two weeks. Slowly, as the weeks go on, or as the days go on, the white starts to come back, it starts to disappear, and you start seeing more flesh, toned colours, you know, not just white crap at the back of your throat, or the back of your mouth, rather. Um, it starts to calm down and that starts to disappear. Um, but it's a lot of white stuff. I mean, it's like a lot of it. It's really horrible. It's like um, sometimes I'd cough and there'd be like a chunk of white. Oh, it was disgusting. Ooh. But um, yeah, that's completely normal. So that's to help heal it. So don't worry. If you see that, that's great. But um, as, day, as the week two came into play that was when it was really bad that was at its worst the pain peaked completely at its worst and it was starting to come to the point i couldn't manage the pain so i actually went to a and e because i was in agony with it i just was crying i was in absolute agony um i saw a doctor he looked in and said yep it looks fine but obviously the pain relief i was taking wasn't coping with the pain it wasn't doing it so he prescribed tramadol, which the hospital did prescribe me, but I, I ran out of that. Um, the only thing with tramadol, it does make you quite drowsy and tired, but it did help with the pain. It really did. Um, I also got prescribed codeine, but I found I got the shakes with that, so I couldn't take that. Um, so I was literally just having paracetamol, ibuprofen and tramadol. And... <clears throat> Um, I went to go see my mum, this was on about day eight, and um, they ordered a pizza, and I was like, oh. So I tried to eat it, considering I hadn't eaten for a week, and it was painful. I mean, it was horrendous. Um, the crusts were actually surprisingly easy, because they were so doughy, and I could chew it, and it would sort of go down. But what I found is it was starting to break the back the barrier the white barrier at the back and it was starting to break that down and heal it better so as much as it was painful to eat it was actually helping in a weird way so that was actually good so on the first week i didn't eat and i don't know if you're meant to the doctor didn't really tell me what to do but the doctor when on day eight when i went to the a and e he said try and eat toast try and you know rough not roughing it up, but try and get that area moving, try and clear some of that white stuff and try and clear it to, you know, reveal the back area. I don't know how you put it, but you know, try and help the area out by clearing some of the debris away, <laughs> the white debris. Um, so that did help. So I started eating toast, but I could, it was really still painful to eat. By the end of week two, it was starting to feel better again. Um, I was able to drink a bit easier and it was starting to feel like I was getting somewhere. So the start of week two wasn't good. It went into absolute hell. But as the end of week two came into play, it was starting to ease up and I was starting to think, oh my God, finally, <laughs> two weeks of this, it's been horrendous. Finally, I'm, I'm getting somewhere. Um, as week three um, happened, when I went into week three, 
I found my throat wasn't hurting as much. I was definitely, I started drinking coffee again, just starting to do more no normal things. And the white really cleared up. There were still bits, but definitely not as much. Um, so it was just kind of relief thinking I'm not in so much pain anymore. Um, cause Honestly, nothing prepared me for those two weeks of hell. It really didn't. I didn't expect that much pain. I've got, I consider that I've got quite a high, high, high blah, 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 blah. I consider myself to have a high pain threshold. Um, just because I think sometimes you just go through things. Like I've had a few root canals and sometimes, you know, you sort of sail through things and you kind of just go, yeah, that's fine. I'm just going to grip my teeth. But this was agony, it was horrible. I, because obviously it's in your throat as well, That's if it was on my arm, I could probably forget about it and just kind of, you know, just go, oh God, that's really sore. Because you're drinking, you're breathing, you're even just moving my head, it hurt. Even just sat there, not doing nothing, I was in pain. And it frustrated the hell out of me so much. I, oh, oh. You know, I feel for anyone that says they've had their tonsils out because I'm like, oh my god. And when you, that person will, if you speak to someone who's had their tonsils out as an adult, you will get that look of, I feel for you. I feel for you because we know what we went through and it, it wasn't nice. It really wasn't nice. So now it's a month later. It's so much better. It's healed. There's still, it still looks sore, but it's not sore kind of gets a bit sore sometimes when I've got a cough or this that and the other it's only a month later it's not going to be 100% amazing back there um, I have got a picture of it as it looks now unfortunately I didn't take any pictures of when it was when I had the surgery then a week later um, just because I couldn't open my mouth enough to get a picture and also it looked horrible I didn't want a picture <laughs> but I didn't know I was going to do this video I wish I just grin and bed and did a picture um, just so you could see the healing, but never mind. Um, so I hope this video has helped in any way. If you have any more questions about anything, please, please contact me. Drop a comment below or email me or tweet me, whatever you fancy. I will get back to you, I promise you. Um, so don't worry, even if the question sounds crazy and you think, oh, why am I asking anything? If you've got a question about anything to do with the tonsillectomy or my other videos, then please, please don't be afraid. I won't bite. <laughs> oh my God, what was that? Um, so anyway, um, let me know if you've had a tonsillectomy because we feel your pain. I feel your pain. I've lived through it. It was horrible. Um, good luck if you are having a tonsillectomy, honestly, it's, afterwards it's worth it, because now I haven't got tonsillitis, and obviously my tonsils are gone, and I'm not in pain anymore, but you have to go through the pain to get to the other side, <laughs> as they say. So, good luck, and I shall see you on my next video soon. Please subscribe if you want to see more, and give a thumbs up if you enjoyed. Bye everyone!